Hello and welcome to the newest Flying Kayak Flying Facts video. In today's video, we are going to take a look at an age-old discussion. The question we're posing today is a question that was posed in a Virgin Atlantic advertisement some while ago that you might have already heard of. Four engines for long haul, or do more engines on an aircraft actually mean that this aircraft is safer than the aircraft with fewer engines? Now, this is a discussion that has been very alive for a very long time among aviation enthusiasts, simulator pilots, and of course, real world pilots alike. And in today's Flying Facts video, I wanted to take a look at this question, and I wanted to try and discuss it, and maybe give you guys a few more facts to base your discussion upon. Now, recently I was watching a YouTube video on this very topic, are more engines really safer? And I read a comment under this YouTube video that I sadly couldn't find again, so I can't give you the exact wording, that went somewhere along the lines of, two engines means twice the probability of an engine failure, means twins are less safe than single engine aircraft. Now, I thought that maybe we'd take a look at the mathematical side first, understanding how probable a failure is and how two engines actually make a failure less likely than one engine on the airplane, or well, a catastrophic failure allowing for the aircraft to crash. And then we take a look at how this translates in actual flight. Does that mean that twin engines are really safer than single engines, or does it mean that single engines might actually be safer because of other reasons, like for example, pilot having a false sense of safety? Now, in order to understand the probability of an engine failure and a dual engine failure, which would lead to a emergency landing or a no power landing, I like to use a so-called tree diagram illustrating the probabilities for each event. We've got three possible events. We've got failure number one engine, a failure of the number two engine, or no failure at all. And after each of these events, a consecutive event could be the failure of the number two engine after failure of the number one engine or no further failure. The same goes for the failure of the number two engine with consecutive events being no failure or a failure of the number one engine and so on and so forth. After no failure, of course, consecutive events would be failure of number one or failure of number two engine. Now, we can add probabilities. I just invented some probabilities here with a probability of an engine failure being 5%. Of course, that's way higher than this would ever be in the real world, as 5% probability of an engine failure would be horrifying odds for any aircraft, and a 90% probability for no engine failure at all. Now, the probability of two consecutive events happening would mean that we would have to consider the failures along a set path, starting up from here, failure of number one engine has a 5% probability and a consecutive failure of the number two engine has a 5% probability again. The failure of the number two engine has a 5% probability and so on and so forth. I did do a slight mistake here. This should be 95% here because now we've only got failure of number two or 95% no failure and all the probabilities here always have to add up to 100%. Now, if you want to discuss the probability of a single event, so the probability of no failure or the probability of failure, we would have to take all possible failure events into account and all possible no failure events. Bear with me for a sec, and I'm going to come back to that in just a minute and we'll discuss and understand how that works in a bit more detail. This is the same tree for a single engine aircraft. You've only got one engine to fail or no failure, meaning you have a 5% probability of failure and a 95% probability of no failure. The single engine failure probability would be 5%. Now, let's take a look at the probability for an engine failure in a twin engine airplane. In order to understand this, we will have to take into account all failure events and we'll have to add up all probabilities for all possible failure events. 5% and 5% means that the probability for one of these two engines to fail would be 10%, or double the probability in a single engine failure. So yes, the likelihood for a engine failure is twice as high in a twin engine airplane as it is in a single engine airplane. However, twin engine aircraft can continue on a single engine and still arrive at the airport safely, meaning that the probability of an all engine failure and then a dead stick landing resulting from this 
is 5% in the single engine and in a twin engine airplane we would have to multiply these two numbers with each other and then we would receive a probability of 0.25% meaning that the probability of a single engine landing is 10% but the probability of both engines failing is 0.25% meaning the probability of a dead stick landing with no engine power at all is way lower than in a single engine airplane meaning that mathematically twin engines and four engine airplanes of course are safer than single engine airplanes however if you take more than two engines it's very likely that your airplane also needs those engines to fly meaning that a quad engine airplane might need two air engines to maintain level flight and a six engine airplane might need three engines to maintain level flight meaning that the more engines you add you'll always have to check if you need a single engine to fly or if you need two engines to fly or three or four or whatever amount of engines you need to fly safely and then have to take that in account then Greater performance of twin engine airplanes allows for greater performance margins, meaning that if an aircraft has two engines, it usually has more performance, meaning it's faster and better equipped, allowing for these aircraft to fly with a bit higher safety margins than single engine airplanes. Now let's take a look at the accident rate per aircraft type. Now if you look at this statistic, the source for which you will find in the video description, You'll notice that single engine piston airplanes have a higher accident rate than multi engine piston airplanes. However, the fatal accident rate is higher among multi engine piston aircraft than among single engine piston aircraft. This initial accident rate does make sense. After all, two engines do mean that you can reach an airport on only a single engine, which makes the airplane a bit safer as it's going to be capable of returning to the airport a lot easier. However, these aircraft have higher fatality rates. The reason for that could be found in several different issues. First off, two engines give a false sense of safety, which might lure pilots into flying further out over the ocean or further away from suitable landing airfields or over rough terrain, which could lead to issues should they suffer a dual engine failure and which could lead to issues should they suffer any other type of emergency like for example a medical emergency or an instrument flight that was uh, or a VFR into IMC type of emergency then twin engine airplanes are usually a lot faster than single engine airplanes meaning that they have a higher impact energy and the higher the impact energy is the worse the outcome is for passengers and pilots usually as higher impact energies do lead to crashes which have a higher fatality rate. Also adverse conditions such as adverse weather conditions and asymmetric thrust meaning one engine providing thrust and the failed engine not providing any thrust might make twin engine aircraft very hard to control on a single engine which means that sometimes even having that spare engine won't save you in the event of an engine failure because due to IFR weather conditions and difficulty controlling the airplane, you might have a too high workload and be incapable of landing the aircraft safely. Also, there's non-engine failure related accident causes like, for example, VFR into IMC or stall spin accidents in traffic patterns. All accidents that have nothing to do with engine failures but are just as fatal and can happen in single engine airplanes and twin engine airplanes regardless of the make and model. Usually non-engine failure related accidents are a little more fatal in twin engines as twin engines are faster, heavier and thus bring more energy to the impact. But no need to worry guys, if you're a passenger on large jetliners, you can rest assured that they have a low likelihood of engine failure. Also modern systems ensure that the pilot workload remains super low even in very intense emergency, situ emergency situations. The Boeing 777, for example, has a thrust asymmetry compensation. If one of the two engines fails, the autopilot automatically compensates and allows the airplane to be flown normally as if it had two engines without the pilot having to make constant rudder inputs for the adverse asymmetric thrust condition, making it a lot easier to fly under single engine conditions and allowing for an a lot easier and safer single engine landing. 
also well-maintained engines and good training such as they are the standard nowadays in airlines and definitely becoming the standard in general aviation leads to less and less crashes each year airplanes are becoming a safer mode of transportation every single year which means that we don't have to worry we'll just have to educate ourselves and ensure that aviation becomes safer and safer as we progress hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to flying kayak flying facts as an additional bonus to the flying facts video about twin engineer planes and are they safer than singles I thought I was going to take a look at that in real life, or in other words, I was going to show you guys what it looks like when an engine fails on a twin engine airplane in the flight simulator. As you can see, we are currently flying the Diamond DA62 by Vertex Simulations in prepared version 4 over southern Germany. Now the Diamond DA62 is a high-performance twin-engine airplane built to be a very safe and easy-to-fly general aviation twin. We're currently cruising along at about 3,000 feet at an altitude of 3,000 feet and at an airspeed of about 160 knots with our cruise power set at 75%, well now it just increased to 76, it increased a bit, and about 2,000 RPM. This is a bit low for this type of airplane, she usually cruises around the mid-teens, somewhere around 15,000 or something, but, well, I guess it's okay for today. The plan now is to turn off one of the engines and then restart it. Now first things first, I'm just going to quickly turn off the autopilot, meaning that everything from now on is manually controlled. Then I'm going to turn off the left engine. Very simple. I'm just going to turn off the left engine master switch. Now you'll immediately notice that the aircraft starts yawing slightly to the left. So I have to counter it by giving it a bit of right rudder. Now, this airplane is designed to be very safe, so she automatically feathers the second engine meaning that this engine is now with its prop turned so that it offers the least wind resistance and even at 74 percent power on the other engine we can easily maintain 3,000 feet of altitude at approximately 130 knots now maintaining altitude with a single engine here is super easy it's even easy to maintain the course and heading simply because I can add in enough rudder to compensate for the adverse yaw and thus fly the airplane safely and my airspeed is a bit of decreasing which is a bit of an issue but not too much actually I'm still in cruising power maintaining my altitude and I'm still in the 120 knot range so far away from a stall or any other sort of adverse condition now, if I were to increase power the maximum available first of my yawing moment would increase as the adverse engine power is now further increased but I would actually be able to accelerate in level flight at about 3,000 feet. Now if I wanted to restart the engine on this particular airplane that's fairly simple all I have to do is turn on the engine master which will unfeather the engine and then allow for the engine to restart from the airflow passing through the propeller. Now let's actually just reactivate the autopilot here real quick. Turn on heading mode, altitude mode. It's going to maintain an altitude of 3,000 feet and heading of 330 degrees, I think. It's going to turn it back around here. A bit further. All right. So what you've just seen is what happens when you use a single engine on the Diamond DA-62. As you can see, a twin-engine general aviation airplane is more than capable of maintaining an altitude, even accelerating in level flight, using nothing but a single engine. This means that twin-engine airplanes have a great safety advantage over single-engine airplanes, at least if you consider engine failure situations.
Thanks for your attention, safe travels, blue skies, and hopefully engine failure free flights. To you guys, have a good one and see you the next time on Flying Kayak, Flying Facts.